it will be propelled by a sound. Somebody say, by a sound. Watch this, a sound of prayer. A sound of worship. Justice, where are you? Justice, wave your hand. Are you Justice? Will you give me that envelope? Uh, you know, I've got a money ministry, man. I can't like giving. Here's 5,000 just to honor you, Justice. Pastor Bradley, will you come here, please? And would you 
What's your wife's name? Eh? John Lynn. Thanks for speaking tense, John Lynn. You have an awesome couple. Yes. Yes. We love you so much, man. God bless you. Your love for the evil, your passion in praise and worship. You're absolutely awesome. And um, God wants to do a new thing in Cape Town. There's been a lot of hurt between fathers and sons. And I gave a word when I was ministering uh, at Apostle Andy Lamb, and I looked at you, and I said, Joseph was the second man. You're a very powerful man of God, son. God is going to use you far beyond your wildest dreams. God's cause is to heal the body of Christ. There are many men that God raised up in Cape Town over the years. You can sense Cape Town, the people's hearts are ready for a great move of God. And whoever God uses now is not the person that can take credit for it. There are many people that have gone on before you and before me uh, that laid their lives down. But there's a lot of hurt in the body of Christ through broken relationships. And it started between fathers and sons. Fathers did not know how to care for sons. And sons did not know how to honor fathers. The last verse in the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, God says, I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, the hearts of the children to their fathers. He says, lest I strike the earth with the curse. And then there was a silence, as you know. And then Jesus was born as a perfect son, who himself, in the incarnation, in the mystery of godliness, he was subject to his father. He said he didn't speak a word unless he heard his father. He didn't do anything unless he saw his father do it. And God is going to use you and your spiritual father's relationship. Of course, ministry, anointing, but your relationship is going to be an intercession against the principalities and powers that must be shifted over the great and that can make a lot of hurt into the body of Christ. And God trusts you, he trusts your wife, and God trusts Apostle Chelsea and Pastor Ezra. They are not perfect, son. Just like you and your wife are not perfect. Just like I am not perfect. We are all a work of God in progress. But we go beyond those things. We do not focus on those things. We are focused on Christ. And God will heal our imperfections. Because we are perfect in Christ. And we are sealed in Christ in that growth. And so... We'll still hurt one another. There's no guarantee that we won't get hurt. No guarantee that we won't get disappointed. But that which binds us together is far greater than the disappointments and the hurt. I believe with all my heart, God is going to raise you up in Cape Town with the young people. It's bigger than New Hope Church. It's far bigger than that. But it's far bigger than one church can contain it. Far bigger. And God trusts you. I want to honor you. I want to do it right now. I want to show a 20,000 rand into your life. God is to you, son. He will bless you even in being a, a, a second man, far greater than even you being a first man. Yeah. 
that he is your source. Man is not your source. He is your source. And you lift up your hands to the Most High God. And the world system you will not compromise with. It's a covenant that you make with Almighty God. Give the Lord Jesus a good You may be seated. So wonderful to see you, Pastor. Heart. And I'm talking about hearts in your heart and your dear wife. God bless you. Man, it's so wonderful to, to meet you. I'd like a big hug from you. Your husband has told me about you. And uh, thank you for your heart for poor people, for empowering poor people. Yes. God will bless you beyond your wildest dreams, sir. That heart is for the poor people. That's why your name is Heart. Give the Lord Jesus a big hand. I want to share with you uh, from the heart of God about putting your enemies under your Making your enemies your footstool. Making all our enemies our footstool. You interrupt me if it goes off, uh, Pastor Ron. It's not an interruption. It's a kingdom transaction. If you have your Bibles, or look at the screen, Psalm 110 from verse 1 to verse 4. Pastor Josie sent me some SMSs. And I actually remember your dad. And I remember sowing a seed to him. I think I did not know it was your father. I may be making a mistake. But you said I was walking out of the church and I sowed a seed to him. If I remember carefully, was he sitting on the side? Somewhere in the center or somewhere? It was in the tent. It was towards behind me. I'm so glad, grateful I did that. It's He's right here as a cloud of witnesses watching okay. here this morning. Thank God that he gave you permission to say that. It's a done deal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You must use that on your side. You promise me. Ross, I'll never give you no more. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? The young people are awesome. My, with such energy, such love for God, such glory, such worship. Mm. You inspired me. I cannot die, man. <laughs> you give me something. When I see you, I want you to pray for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I've got some wisdom to give to you. Yes. We can do this thing together. We can yes. definitely do this thing together in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the men that are traveling with me. Thank you for the son, my baby daughter. I wasn't too old, I was still young. She was the last one that was born. She was my armor bearer. She traveled with me and all over the world. America, looking after the father, and she did, Canada, Australia, and uh, it's so wonderful that she still can come alongside and, and share with me family, he's so gracious, and we see your children across the Jersey, and see you in uh, Desiree, see them in the music here, uh, our only you know, Say what they call it, PK, pastor's kids. Usually in churches are the most dangerous kids. When you see PKs worshiping the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. Church 
children, they make your parents look great. Mm. When John is speaking, I made me look good. I'm not so good. <laughs> he made me look. My sons and daughters make me look good. My family makes me look good. You're making me look good. Far greater than I am. And it's so wonderful, it's so wonderful, because Christ is made to look good. You know, this new move, we're not pine trees shooting into the sky. We find trees. A pine tree shoots up all alone. A pine tree grows on the ground. We are down where children can touch us. No big names and big titles and being untouchable by society. Jesus never said he's a pine tree. He said he is a true Fine. And we are those branches that are spreading out. And I speak that into Cape Town that there is a move of God of the branches of the true vine. That is not high and mighty, but there is a new order that God is bringing through into Cape Town where relationships will be healed and Christ will be glorified. I speak that and I declare it. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. A psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou as the dew of thy youth, the Lord had sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, praise God for his word. Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool, is the most quoted or alluded to Old Testament verses in the New Testament. At least quoted or alluded to 25 times. The next quoted Old Testament scripture is Leviticus 19 verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Two most quoted scriptures, God's two favorite verses. Psalm 110 verse 1 is God's most favorite verse in the New Covenant. Right running just behind him is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that is those two commandments and the whole Bible. Loving God, loving God. As I left the hotel to get into the car, I'm so grateful for people. I love people. I don't have to do what I'm doing. I do it because I love people. The Bible says, you know you've passed from death to life because you love people. <coughs> If you don't love a city, don't preach to it. If you don't love your church, shut up. Don't come up and preach to people and you don't love people. You are all the fake when you do it. You're not for real. Because God loves people. God chose to incarnate himself through people. God chose to clothe himself through human flesh. The unseen God chose to reveal his image 
through people that are visible. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Cannot be seen. But he wanted an image. And when you see Jesus the man, you will see God. The Greeks wanted to see Jesus. And the disciples came to say to Jesus, these Greeks are going to see you. And he gave them an agricultural lesson. Amazing. I've thought of that many times. He said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it fall to the ground and die, it brings forth much fruit. What was Jesus saying to those people that wanted to see Jesus? He was saying, Jesus will be seen, the Christ will be seen in the harvest. Christ is seen in the harvest. The one seed died and fell to the ground. And you, I saw Christ here this morning. I saw Christ in praise and worship. I saw Christ in the dances. I stood up and I turned around and I looked at you. Somebody gave me a snap of justice. I think it was Washington because he knew what I wanted to do. So he sent me a snap of justice in the service. And he didn't, I don't, he didn't ask me to look at it. I just opened this phone and I looked at it. And what did I see? There at the back I saw justice's hand worshiping the Lord. I saw Christ. If you cannot see Christ in people, you'll never see Christ. Because Christ is the incarnation of God through people. You are the Christ of God. You are the body of Christ in the earth. And so I see Jesus in you. And it makes me want to love you. I see him in your eyes. I see him in your dance. I see him in you loving him. I see him when you want to take all your crowns and worship him. Oh, I see Christ. Let's keep that. Keep that always in the forefront of our mind. That Christ is the true vine. And we are so grateful that we are the branches. We abide in him. He abides in us. His life, his nature, his ability flows through us. And through us abiding in, we bring much fruit. And so is the Father glorified. The Father is glorified through fruit of Christ. When people say, I didn't come to Jesus. I didn't come to Jesus through your life. So many people say that about me. Children call me Jesus. There's children in our church who say, when they go in the service, they say, we're going to Jesus. We're going to see Jesus. Because you see, where would Jesus be found if you could have rewound the clock? He would have been found amongst the children. He wouldn't have been found in the palaces. He would have been found amongst the poor, amongst the needy, amongst the hurting. And, and that's what it's all about. That's what life is all about. It's about healing people, finding a need and filling it, finding a hurt and healing. What is the definition of prosperity? The definition, the true definition of prosperity is the ability to meet any given need at any given time. It's not about motor cars, even though God blesses us with them. It's not about beautiful clothing. It's not about beautiful houses, even though we enjoy all those things. It's not that we don't enjoy it. But that's not what it's all about. It's about meeting humanity's needs. That's what it's all about. If you are focused on the things, you'll be in big trouble. You get focused on the kingdom, the king and his kingdom. And it will amaze you what God can give you. 
And when you keep that focus, those things will never have you. You will have them without them having you. Let's give our king a big hand. Why are these God's favorite scriptures? Why are they the most quoted scriptures? I believe, number one, the Bible teaches that we were crucified together with Christ. That word together is a powerful word because it does mean individually that I was crucified with Christ, yes, but it doesn't only mean that. We were crucified together. So we all, the old man, the first Adam man in us, all died together. The word together means vertical, but the word together means horizontal. And we together with Christ, we together with one another. We were all buried with the same burial. We all rose with the same resurrection. And we are all seated together. Say together. Yeah. All seated together with Christ. We are Christ's body. So, Christ defeated every enemy in his resurrection. And in his ascension, every enemy. No enemy was left. Even death, the last enemy, was defeated. And in his ascension, God called him God. God addressed Christ as God and said, come sit on my right hand. Now, Christ is man and God. Christ is not God alone. Christ is human and divine. All the time, Christ, God God put himself into humanity for Christ, for you and I. It's the Christ of God. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. I read that to our pastors when we're coming here in the car. God just manifested in the flesh Okay, then that's, that's a heavy one. But then just from it, in the spirit, God had to be made like his name is sin. Why? Because he was made sin. God, not God, Christ was made sin. Because God cannot be made sin. But this mystery, the secret of godliness, God had to become a man to go to the cross because of his love for us. And he had to die. God can never die, but Christ died. And Christ went down. And Christ rose again. When he got born again in the pit of hell, he was justified. He was the firstborn now among many brethren. He became firstborn of man. So he became our big brother. This God that loves us so much. This God. What's this all about God? How can you love me so much? What am I? And the king will die in my place. You can make sin for me. And then you could conquer that and satisfy your own claims of justice so that you can extend your mercy and declare God, Christ makes me his, my, I'm his smaller brother. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's not ashamed to call 
you. Uh, not ashamed. He's not ashamed of you. Ketonians. Christ is not ashamed of you. So never let the devil fool you that Christ is ashamed of you. He is not ashamed of you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He keeps you in the hollow of his hand and no man can pluck you out. Nothing can ever separate you again from his love. Not life, not even death, not even things to come, not even principalities and powers shall ever, ever be able to separate you from his This, these, the, the favorite scriptures of God, the favorite scriptures of Christ, because the word is Christ, is number one, Christ conquered all the enemies for you. Oh, and now he went to be seated, which actually means the first phase of his ministry was complete. It is finished. But he entered into a second phase, which is a high priestly ministry, a kingly ministry, at the right hand of the Father. Because when he arose from the dead, and he, God said, come sit at my right hand, addressing him as God, God was also addressing you. Because he never rose again empty-handed. He never went to sit on the throne alone. He has risen with him. Together with him. And we are made to sit together with him. But he now became our head, a glorified Christ. And we are his body. And this head is in heaven on the throne. And his body is on the earth. But as far as God is concerned, there is no more gap between heaven and earth. And while we live in our natural body, this is just an earthen vessel. I'm in heaven at the same time. I'm more aware of heaven, more aware of Christ than the devil. And all what I see that's going on around me, I'm taken up with heaven.
just like it took place in the womb of Mary. Now this is the Mary church. It's taking place in the womb of the church. Because the church now is the bride of Christ. Isn't it amazing that God made Adam, took Eve out of Adam, brought Eve back to Adam, and made them one. One took us out of Christ, brings us back to Christ, and makes us one spirit of the Lord. And now to be the bride of Christ. So we have intimacy with Christ. Intimacy, worship with God. Mary said, how can these things be? I'm a virgin, teenager. I know not a man. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the dunamis will Jesus. And you're going to Christmas, you're going to see pictures of the baby Jesus. Is he still a baby? Then we saw him growing up, subject to his parents. Then we saw him as a lonely Galilean, meeting the needs of people. Then we saw him on the cross. Then he went to the tomb. Then he was resurrected. And now he is glorified. And the Bible says there is only one mediator between God and man. The man. The man. Amen. Tell your neighbor, do you know the man? The man, Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a resurrected, glorified, man on the throne representing all of us and he loves you just as much as he loves me and I'm part of him and he's part of me just as much as you are part of him and I'm part of you just as much as you are part of me isn't that what Jesus prayed for in John 17? That we would all be made even as he is one with the Father. And the Father is one. That we would all be made together in the Father and in the Son. up a God generation. God is raising up a Christ generation. God is raising up a Christ nation. That is a theme of the priest. A Christ nation of brethren that are so in love with Christ in one another. The past generations were looking to a Christ only in heaven. There's a generation that sees Christ in one another. And what's going to happen? That becomes a bride. And then the consummation of that becomes a new Jerusalem. And the consummation of that becomes the tree of life. It's the bride of the city. And in Genesis 22, it's a tree of life that gives fruit every month. Taste. Every month you'll be eating fruit, fruitfulness. The first thing that Adam heard God say, be fruitful.
fruitful. Why? God was making a demand on the life he breathed into his nostrils. He got the ability, the potential to be so fruitful. See you like a branch just grapes. So no children can touch them. You know how to touch them. That's what's so lovely about you. You're not high and mighty. Christ never ever designed you to be high and mighty. Christ wants heaven and the earth. As it is in heaven, it's Christ may be all in all. So, why is it God's favorite scripture? Because when Christ sat on the throne, my opening text said, The Lord, David is speaking, and by inspiration, that word Lord is Yahweh, the first word. It's now Jehovah. So Jehovah said to my Lord, David calls Christ his Lord, because that is now not all capital letters the second Lord. It is small case letters. So whenever you see in the Bible all capital letters, it means Yahweh, it means Jehovah. When you see it in small case letters, it means Adonai. <coughs> it means Lord and Master and Honor. And so Jehovah is speaking to Jesus. When Jesus entered into heaven, and Jehovah said, Come sit down. Jehovah said to Jesus, David says, Jesus is my Lord. Jehovah said to my Lord. David was before Christ. But Christ is the son of David. But David says he's my Lord. By revelation, he says, Jehovah says to my Lord. Come sit here. Come sit here. When someone loves you so much with the listen. Sit down. I never say that to you. I can sit here next to me. If you love somebody, where do you want them? Right here by you. Come sit here. Tell your neighbor, come sit here. Come sit here. Come sit here. God is speaking to you, man. Come sit here. I said, God is saying to you, come sit here. says to Jesus in his ascension, come sit here until I, Jehovah, make all your enemies your footstool. This song is about the ascension. It's about the inauguration of Christ in his glorification in heaven. Now, let's just pause and rewind. In all you're getting, get understanding. You cannot get anything without understanding. That's why understanding is like the prince of the way. You understand before you get. When you understand, you can never get brainwashed ever again. And so, let's ask some questions. We rewind it. When Christ said, it is finished. What did he mean? Did he mean some enemies were not destroyed? <coughs> when he said it's finished. Is there any enemy Christ did not destroy on the cross? Is there any enemy? All enemies were destroyed. Why? Christians Never be afraid to ask God questions. It's all a religious junk. 
don't ask any questions. Just a little bar of comment. Every question has an answer. And sometimes it's just the right question. It's the key of the kingdom. It opens the door. So, we clear now um, that Christ defeated every enemy. Who is speaking in Psalm 110, verse 1? David's recording as the curtain is drawn back and he saw Christ coming into heaven in his ascension. You very hard, seldom hear the ascension being preached in church. What do you hear? Him being born. His life. Gospels is just his life. Everybody's preaching about the gospel. Wonderful. You see, your revelation of who Christ is is either people vision or panoramic vision. I miss you from the captain. Once we a story about little Billy. Billy was about five years old and his parents were leaving and going to work and his parents said, Billy, don't you ever go out of the gate. Today there is a procession that's going to take place. Thousands of people are going to march in the street. You stay in the yard. There are a lot of noise. And so the parents drove off, closed the gate. Just as the parents said, the procession started. And Billy, the fence blocked Billy's vision. He longed to see what was really happening. It's like the flesh blocks us. Like veiled. Cannot see anything. Just see all the negativity that's going on. See nothing that God is actually doing. Where the scripture says, everything that can be shaken is being shaken. That the things that cannot be shaken will remain. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We serve God by grace, reverence, and godly fear. And so Billy longed and an inquiring mind. And he came close to the fence and he found a people there. And he looked. He just saw people passing, bugles, trumpets, speeches, noises. And he longed to see beyond the fence. Don't you long to see beyond your flesh? You see, the flesh just gives you small glimpses. While he's longing, his big brother calls Billy from the second landing and said, Billy, come up higher. And the big brother goes down and meets him on the ground floor, grabs his hand, and takes him to the next floor. And when Billy stands on the top of this floor, it's above the fence. And he is delivered from people. And he now has panoramic in one glance, he can see everything. He can see where it started. He can see where it's going to. He can see where it is at the moment. And he opens his mouth and he... And that's exactly what your big brother did to you. That is why Paul said this. And Paul was an amazing man. Peter said this one. Paul speaks some hard things. He says, hard to understand, this apostle. But then he went on to say, nevertheless, it's the word of God. Paul said, there's some things he wants to tell them about the Melchizedek order that they are hard of hearing. Because they, and, and, and now the generation is ready for this revelation. 
It's been cooking in my life for 42 years. But I'm ready to dish it out to this generation. It is a company of God men and God women that's going to take this baton and run with it. And heaven will be manifested in the earth. That nations will come to Jesus. Sickness will be destroyed. Poverty will be destroyed. Sin will be overcome. Broken relationships will be healed, and a God nation will come up, and the church will be like a city built on a hill that cannot be healed. New Hope Church, you've been in obscurity for too long. Make up camp. This is the day of your visibility. You're going to be seen. You proved yourself faithful in little things, you will be faithful in much. It's a time of a visitation beyond you ever know. This visitation is for habitation. I'm not going to go away, it's just going to increase and increase because we become a tabernacle. We become the house of God. Wonderful that you're building. Arms. And thank God for that. Don't ever make that light of that. But you know who's the real house of God? It's you. Whose house we are. We are Christ's house. We are Christ. And we the tabernacle of God. Is it too deep? Does it come back a little bit? Is it long term? Can you see why these two scriptures are God's favorite verses? <coughs> God's got favorite verses. The whole Bible is a logos. It's what God gave us. But there is in this present day truth. So what I'm showing you is present day truth. Something that God wants to incarnate now. Thank God for yesterday, it's all here, but it culminates into this. Yes. And so you need to know what God is doing now. Say now. now. Say, watch his face. Watch his face. I'm about to manifest. As to who I really am. Be careful now. Give me my space. Give me my space. So how much more time? Five minutes. Five more minutes, Josie. Why they call you Josie and not James? Can I ask? You don't know. That's my second name. Or J J Josie is your second name. James is my second name. Or James your second name. James is our brother of Jesus. Like Joba, you know, man. Anyway, <laughs> two favorite verses of God has to do with the inauguration of Jesus. Was Christ? There's three places you should know Christ. Christ in His pre-incarnation. Was Christ there before He was born? Yes, he was Christ. Who was he? He was the Word. Yes. Then you have him in his incarnation. Then you have him in his glorification. Your vision or your understanding or your perception of who Christ is, is your internal capacity 
what you can handle. And thank God he was a baby. Thank God for the Gospels. But he never started building a church in the Gospels. Do you know that? He never built the church in his incarnation. There's only two places he spoke about the Ecclesia. In fact, the word church is not a translation. It's a transliteration. It's a wrong word. It should have been government. When Jesus said, I'll build my Ecclesia, he says, I'm building my government. We made it into a religious organization. It was never supposed to be a religious Kings. He's building a royal priesthood. He's building a habitation for the government of God. In the earth. Only two places. And those two places, he said, if you know I am Christ, to Peter, flesh and blood is not revealed. As what was that? You are the Christ. Number two, you are the Son of the living God. You're the second person of the Godhead. But you are Christ. You are human and divine. But you are the second person of the Godhead. Let me just get in there. He'll never share his Godhead with you. But he shares his life, nature, and ability. He makes you just a little lower than God in his Godhead. But an extension, if you will, for the want of a better word, an extension of the Godhead, a family of God, a son of God, the offspring of God. And he says, you will dominate the works of my hands. You will rule like how Christ ruled, but you will rule from a greater dimension because he said, greater works you will do. Why? Because I go to my Because you will rule from glorification. So he said, I'll build my church, first of all, on that rock, Revelation. That's it. First time he said, he'll build his government. He only preached the kingdom of God. He never preached church. You look for the word church in the Gospels, you'll only find it twice. But it doesn't mean religion. The second time he said that, he used that for broken down relationships. If anyone has ought against anyone, go to that person and make right to that person. If he doesn't listen to you, take two and go to him. If he wasn't listening to them, tell it to the church. If they don't listen to you in the church, treat them like an infant. He was talking about governmental order to heal broken relationships. He only started building the church in the book of Acts. There was no church in the Gospels. Only kingdom of God. When he rose from the dead, took his blood into heaven, and came back and spent 40 days with his apostles. And he was only teaching them about the kingdom of God. Not church. Kingdom of God. Rule of God. Government of God. Order of God. Heaven on the earth. That stuff he was teaching. And when he built, began to build a church, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. These are the days of heavenly rhythms and heavenly sounds in the spirit. I speak an anointing to anointing eternally here that you will know the rhythms of the Spirit of God. 
rhythms, that music will come out of you. I speak into your music team. There's some music that's going to come out that ain't singing in the background because you have tapped into the rhythms of the spirit, the rhythms of heaven, the rhythms of the spirit of the almighty God. Hallelujah. There is rhythm in God. There's music in God. And these are the days it will come for. People will begin to sing new songs like they've never prepared it. And it will just flow like a river in the name of Jesus. He began to bring the church. And he was in a hurry. He came as a wind. Just like how God into Adam's nostrils. He came and he filled the house. He's filling you. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each one. It wasn't not a small mastic flame. God is bigger than a mastic flame. He sat on the head of each one. <laughs> he wants to make you, he wants to sit, he wants to overcome you. And the world filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with him. And then they began to speak. Without the tongues, that's when it gave them out. They said that they were drunk. Peter, brother, in Acts 2, and quoted Psalm 110. He's first quoted from Job for Cabbage Martyr. Then he quoted Kingdom. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. I draw this to a close in a matter of a few minutes. You can play a beautiful song here, it's fine song. I'm going to just tell you quickly, we'll do it quickly because you've got to buy this tape. You have listened to 43 years of preparation of the meal I give you today. I'm not always at liberty to share it, but I feel that you are here to receive it. Is it what? Well, let me get up to it. Let me close it to this. The first verse in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. First verse says the genealogy of Jesus Christ. What does it say? The son of David. The son of Abraham. Now you know and I know that Abraham was before David. Right? Yes, sir. Abraham was before that. Yes, but when it starts with these two main roots, where does it start with? Yes. David. Did the Holy Spirit make a mistake? No. It put David first, then Abraham. And then it goes all the genealogy of the Christ, God as a man, is in chronological order. But this first verse is not in chronology. Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. One of God's two favorite verses. Psalm 110 and Leviticus. Love your neighbor as your son. What does David stand for? Throne. Government. What does Abraham stand for? Covenant. With God. With one another. Never set covenant this way. It's not a power. It's always a cross. They can never be. should never be a cross without a throne. A throne. And 
his wife is going with him. She's going to sing. And we have some of the worship team going with him. And uh, we just know that they are so ready to just release the fire of God. Stretch your hands towards them as we pray for them. Father, we are so grateful for what you have done in this place this morning. Father, we are so grateful that your Holy Spirit has raised and built the Christ on the inside of us. And I'm reminded when the power of God came in the book of Acts and set as tons of fire upon each one. Beyond the power that we receive, it is really the power to become like Christ and to raise the Christ on the inside of us. Father, as they are released to go to Kenya to a, to a foreign nation, to a foreign culture, we pray that you will just be with them, O oh God. Guide, protect them as they will fly many hours. That your Holy Spirit will use them mightfully. That your Holy Spirit will use them mightily. Come on, just say that the Holy Spirit will use them mightily. Stretch your hands towards them. Come on, just pray the Spirit for them now. Pray the Spirit for them. Let us hear you, just let us hear you. Pray the Spirit for them. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. Thank you for your word, your servant that ministered to us this morning. We pray, Father, that we will not be forgetful. Hear us of your word. Father, that you will soak us and saturate us in this word, Father. And that we will be that, that this word will incarnate in us and will become flesh. You have given us a mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. Kingdom and covenant, the Jesus Christ generation, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name, Father. We pray tonight for tonight's service, Lord. Father God, that what has been ministered this morning and that will what will happen tonight, Father, that the environment and the territory around us, Father God, this whole jurisdiction will respond apostolically and prophetically to what is happening in this Receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. Lift up both hands and receive the prophetic blessing of God. Shalom. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and be gracious unto thee and give thee peace now and forever. And all the saints together in one accord will give us a mighty amen. 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 Hallelujah. It will be propelled by a sound. Somebody say, by a sound. Watch this, a sound of prayer, a sound of worship, a sound of word. Those are the three sounds that God is allowing to be released. There will be a sound of prayer. Thank God for the intercessors that prays every day at five o'clock. There's a sound of prayer going through our communities. There's a sound of worship being raised up. preceded by a prophetic sound. Somebody say sound. A sound that will penetrate walls of limitation and division and change atmospheres supernaturally.